Category B prisons. Or as my colleagues affectionately call them, the shit of the shit. Everyone who goes to a prison is sent to a Cat B first, everyone. The idea is you get categorised first and then you are sent to an appropriate prison. Cat A's for the lifers, you know, murderers, serial rapists, drug dealers, and I ain't chatting about the local boy you occasionally buy your line of white from in the pub. I mean the hardcore ones, the ones who own planes and boats and are bringing that shit in here. Cat C are the ones most people go to, from your ABH, drunk drivers, to burglars and some pervert getting caught watching child porn. Cat D's, otherwise known as open prisons, are for inmates who pose no threat to the general public, low risk, you know like tax fraud, perjury, not paying your council tax. The prisoners carry their own flipping keys to their cells in a Cat D, no one dicks around in a Cat D because no one wants to go to a Cat B prison. No one wants to come here. Prisoners and screws alike. On paper, this is how it is supposed to work, but in practice, because of overcrowding, I've seen inmates serve their entire term in a Cat B prison. Sometimes being a good screw is learning when not to be a good screw, if you follow me. It is learning when to turn a blind eye to certain things. If a little pop keeps them on top, who am I to argue? As long as they ain't taking the piss or think that they own you, I'm down with that. It's all about keeping the pressure. If we didn't keep the pressure, you'd be seeing riots in prisons every other week. My husband Joel asked me once, what is it that I fear most about my job? My answer? Opening doors. Cell doors, to be precise, in the mornings, when they are let out. You see, during the night, when they are all tucked up, that is the only time that we cannot keep an eye on them. They have eight or nine hours alone to do God knows what to each other and to themselves. And believe me, they do. We had one crazy. He stripped himself naked, rubs faeces all over his body and his cellmate's faeces before slashing his own wrists with a razor blade. See, he thinks that we won't try and save him. And he's right. In another life, was I going to go anywhere near him? One of our lot, he tried, played the hero, managed to stop the bleeding. That was when he wasn't throwing up every five seconds. In case you're wondering, that prisoner died. Now, normally, when something like that goes down, at the end of a shift, we all take each other down the local boozer and we knock them back until there's no tomorrow. We keep knocking them back until today's events seem like a distant memory in our minds. That's how it go. Screws united. We are there for each other. Because no one is there for us. <laughs>